episode of the Early Childhood Educator. Today we're going to reorganize the art shelf. We installed these art shelves a couple months ago and I haven't got a chance yet to organize them the way I'd like. So, so far they've just been a place for things when I don't know where else to put them, as well as the art materials that I pulled down for the children and other materials that I set up as provocations, specifically in the sensory bin. My goal for this area is one, make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and two, make it a whole lot more organized. I want to have some bins labeled for myself so I know what is in them and what I need to take stock of. And then I'd love to have some clear plastic containers so that the children can see what we have available and they can request by either pointing or verbally. shelf it's all clear up there I just left the one plant on the end because I know for sure that I want that there and it feels fresh and I'm really excited to get to organizing I don't know about you but organizing gets me so excited and feels so good after all right now I'm gonna go ahead and show you all of the materials I just pulled off the shelf I've lined them up on the carpet kind of somewhat in a organized fashion and so I can see what I have and to know exactly how I want to display it and keep it. There it is, it's all laid out in my playroom here. We'll start at this end. I've got this bin here that has written on odds and sods felt. Um, this is a plastic tablecloth. That A lot of this were donations from teachers that um, are friends of ours. Um, this is wrapping paper. Random like chalkboard labels. Had this in the uh, sensory bin for a while. It made an awful mess, but it's kind of actually like wood shavings. Things like coffee filters, paper doilies, lots of tissue paper, and these came with a cash register that I bought. They're like card, card stock, little credit cards and coins. Here's some Valentine's stickers. Maybe we'll pull those out soon. And like some paper leaf cutouts. Oh, and I've got these kind of footprint pieces of cardboard. And then also over here, I've got, this is a big roll. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll see I have a big whiteboard um, peel and stick sheet of lined paper on my wall. This was the backing for it and it's kind of slippery. So I don't know, I felt like there could be some play exploration here, even if we just use the other side as a big piece of paper for some painting or something. And here I've got a roll of white paper. And I've also got a big roll of brown paper that's just tucked behind a piece of furniture. Um, more cardboard recycling. And like this used to be for watercolors. And these are just wooden little trays for setting out um, loose parts or whatever. And these are actually from I believe they're grocery store flatbreads that you can buy. My mom was enjoying these for a while and collected them. They're nice pieces of cardboard. Um, sometimes I put Play-Doh out on this because this is actually like almost wipeable. Um, and then this is a box of like a million of my business cards that like I don't use because I don't need business cards really. This is good on one side paper as well as just extra random paper. And then, as you can see, I've got lots of paint. So these ones across here are all half used and actually kind of gross because um, they're like spoiled almost, but they work. And then these I just ordered in the fall time to replace them. This is a kind of spice rack organizer, I guess. And then as well in the fall, I bought these paint cups so I can leave the paint out for the kids to use. 
they come with a little stopper in the top so that the paint doesn't dry out but I was hoping to have these across the bottom of the easel here and then they can just be out all the time I think I might be asking for trouble not because I'm not up for having paint out all the time I just think that these maybe aren't going to work so I might have to like build something or come up with a different idea for this area but I really want to have paint that's just like always accessible for the children and then uh, what came with those is just a bag full of paintbrushes and these little paint trays which actually we've used a lot and over here I've got a bucket of glue sticks there's also some stamps thrown in there and glitter glue scissors markers pencils got some watercolors and some clay over here these are like old pencil cases from when me and my sister were little and they've got just really old pencil crayons in there and there's a couple things of play-doh we usually make our own play-doh but we've got some play-doh brand and then these little jars my battery's about to die loose parts so I've got googly eyes there's clothes pins um, bread tags this one's empty and then a load of paint brushes and painting materials Got these scrub brushes I picked up at the dollar store recently for painting. There's some string here. This bucket has doweling and there's um, popsicle sticks in there and rulers. This is obviously pipe cleaners. That's some glitter. And in this bucket is all sorts of random stuff. Let's see what's in here. Play-Doh tools, yogurt containers, I got these alphabet cookie cutters. I thought they were so great, but then I realized they're so small that you can't even pop the Play-Doh out. Some fabric paint. These are just empty yogurt cups. And I will sometimes fill this up with water. And then you know how they have the special cap. And then I will just pour that or squeeze it out onto the watercolor. Um, instead of having a jar to dip your paintbrush in, I just get the watercolor wet. I don't know why there's a spoon in there. Okay, moving on from over here, in he this blue bag, I just have another set of those um, scarves and just some shredded paper for a sensory bin. I ordered these logs, blocks, and I thought they were like four times the size that they are. So still deciding what to do with them or just as a loose part once um, my youngest is old enough. Same with these scoops, I thought they were much bigger than they are, but we can use these actually, I forgot I had them. And then I've got some pig people that I wanted to paint for our small world play area. Over here we have some like fake ivy that I purchased and I want to put this in the classroom but I just can't decide where. Um, you'll learn as you watch my videos, I'm super indecisive sometimes. And then I got these on sale at Lowe's at the holiday time. And they are just some Christmas twinkle lights. Haven't decided yet where I want those either. Um, hiding up there is just this border for our bulletin boards. So I've got to find a place for that. And then all these plastic trays my mom was getting rid of. I thought hmm, I could use those for something. And then over here I've got these containers with loose parts or sensory bin fillers. Tongue depressors. Here I put all those chickpeas that were we had and this one currently is just filled with crayons and markers so we're gonna change that up as well I've got cotton balls for sensory bin plastic animals which should be put away somewhere else so those are plastic fish these are plastic farm animals that need to go away um, a random dry erase board I picked these up at Dollarama little alphabet wooden alphabets and my mom really enjoys to do the diamond dots like coloring by number and these are all the leftover little diamond dots so we'll use those for something and then this bit has all sorts of loose parts and stuff for sensory bin that I picked up the other week so I've got some parts 
and shower curtain rings. The clear ones are super neat on light table. Um, so some colorful noodles from the bulk barn. And these ones are like bug shaped. I thought those were neat. There's corks hiding down there, and this is bird seed. Here are some of the organizing bins I got for these ones are for loose parts. So I intentionally bought some clear bins so that we can see what's inside and the children, if they're nonverbal, they can point and request. If they do have language, they can at least see and describe what they what they'd like. And as well, I've got these plastic bins. And I also picked up some pottery looking type pieces from my thrift store and I'm hoping to use these for organizing my paint brushes and stuff like that. It's important to me that the space looks clean, organized, and aesthetically pleasing, but on a budget. I'm not willing to spend a lot of money on this, um, but I'm going to look around my home and see what I have to make my shelves look attractive and not like a cluttered space, even though there's lots of stuff we got to put up there.
joining me again on another week of the Early Childhood Educator. We'll see you next week. Take care.